If the narcissist picks a fight out of nowhere and storms out and then doesn't respond, doesn't answer the text all night, and probably doesn't respond to text or answer the phone all day tomorrow until like around 4 o'clock maybe, you got to think about it. If this was Saturday night that it happened, they already had plans with the new supply. They were going to go to that motel and they were going to do their thing. Then they woke up, they did their thing, and then they went for brunch. Then around 4 o'clock, new supplies dropping them off. Now she's going to call you. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another edition of the Psychopath Exposure Show. My name is Kita. How are you guys doing today? Um, you guys remember when your lying, cheating, narcissist ex picked a fight and ghosted you for the weekend? What was that miserable mutant doing during that time? Yeah, so... For those of you that saw, that was a poll that I recently dropped in the channel about a week ago or so. I'm going to go ahead and read through the options and the comments that you guys left as I had promised I would do. So the multiple choice was uh, number one was A. Well, number one and A. Look at me screwing things up already. Anyway, um, the first choice, A, was they were in a motel with the low-hanging fruit new supply. Number two, they were working on themselves to save the relationship. Number three, they were home alone, studying for that exam in pajamas. And number four, they were cooking French toast for the new supply sucker face. So you guys voted. You guys voted and the number one answer, 86% was the first one. They were in a motel with a low-hanging fruit new supply. That's right, guys. Look, if the narcissist picks a fight out of nowhere and storms out and then doesn't respond, doesn't answer the text all night, and probably doesn't respond to text or answer the phone all day tomorrow until like around four o'clock maybe you got to think about it if this was saturday night that it happened they already had plans with the new supply they were going to go to that motel and they were going to do their thing then they woke up they did their thing and then they went for brunch then around four o'clock new supplies dropping them off now she's going to call you okay I mean, you don't have to be a, a genius to figure that one out. But I did want to read some of the top comments that you guys left. And then I'm going to read uh, my favorite one and go into detail about that one. Um, so we got here, this one comes from Brad and goes, well, none of the above. That's interesting. He's, he says, Nactris modes operandi is to invite new supply over for one night of niceness, although strange, then start the cycle all over again, juggling primaries, secondary, and imaginary for triangulation, mind screwery. And we're trying to keep it clean here because YouTube likes to mess around with the algorithm. Condo torture chamber only surpasses, <laughs> that's awesome, first of all. Condo torture chamber only surpassed by, you got it, the car rides from hell. I worked in her neighborhood as a contractor when the neighbor reference was made. Him and the neighbor used to make bets how long the current car in the driveway would be there before another victim took their place. This isn't merely narcissistic, but all who enter had psychopath exposure. Holy crap, that was close. That's so funny when, when, when the neighbors are making bets because they already know what's going on and they see a new car every day or every week. It's kind of like going to the, to the same bar 
and you're taking like a new girl every week and uh, the server already knows, oh, look who he's with today. This, this is a pretty one, you know, because you're a regular and you're always bringing in, in a new girl or this and the other. So, yeah, I, I feel you. I feel you. Um, NO426 says, they were eating alone and getting fatter. Don't, I, I don't think that's what they were doing. Nope, nope, but thanks for submitting that. Juanito says, mine would always accuse me of cheating at the end of the month like clockwork and say, I just went and did nothing. A week later, towards the end of our relationship, I decided to go take a look. I seen a group of guys outside her house and one guy stood out and I knew that's who she was cheating with. When she started showing him off, I was like, yep, I was right. You know, you, you can always tell when the narcissist starts to talk about somebody. Um, that there's something uncanny about it. Like, why, why are you talking about this person so much? This person's always in the conversation, and I've never even met this person. This is a coworker. you say, oh, and now your coworker took you out for sushi? Um, is this what you guys do? Who, who is this guy, right? How, how come you guys are going to a party? Oh, but you're going in their car? But, and it's just amazing how, how we accept, we accept that, that, um, that type of behavior, right? When you, you know what's going on. But it's, it's like they flaunt it right in your face. The narcissist just flaunts the stuff right in your face because they are genuinely having a great time doing it. They know exactly what they're doing. They're having fun with it. They're showing off. They're getting narcissistic supply out of it. Just being able to dangle that carrot, or in this case, not even a, a carrot that they're dangling. They're, they're dangling the truth in front of you. And you're like, <laughs> is, she, is, she actually, is she actually cheating? Is that guy? No, nah, it can't be. It couldn't be. You know what's going on. You always knew. I always did. And this, uh, what, Leilob? Leilob says, after the last fight, he immediately started posting pics with his new supply. Getting drunk with her, plus taking her on a road trip, and doing all the things he didn't want to do with me. Isn't that interesting? Turned out she was never in a relationship with him. He only used her to triangulate and make me think he was happily in love. The girl is now married to someone else, and he reached out to me long ago and told me she used him. And she turned out to be a horrible person. Called her a that said they were never really in a relationship. Just madness. Thank God my eyes are wide open and I don't believe a single word that comes out of his mouth. Well, first of all, congratulations on unlocking that achievement of not believing a word the narcissist says. Um, that's a great achievement. Congratulations to you on that. It takes a while. It takes a while. We know, we know the narcissist is lying, and yet we still believe them. That's what gives them power. You still believe the person that has lied to you time and time again. The person that has denied the undeniable evidence that you have, the evidence you have dangled in front of them, and they still deny it. And yet you're still going to believe the things that come out of their mouth. No, 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 no. Good for you. Good for you that you don't believe them anymore. Sucks that he played you like that. Um, but remember, he played her too. He played her too. And whatever he said, probably BS. Um, what else do we have here? Homespace says, he did go out of town for a weekend and send me a pic of him standing near the bed. Probably when the supply was in the bathroom. <laughs> Kicked him out when he got back. He can move in with his supply. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, if it, if it got to that point already, you probably already knew something was going down, and now he's sending you a pic of... Yeah, come on. They do, it, they do that all the time. Some of them send you a picture while they're in the bed with the supply, and you'll see, like, a shoulder, or you'll see, like, a strand of hair, or some, something like that. But yeah, they love doing that. They're, they're hoping you're not going to catch them. They're hoping you're not going to catch them. They'll, they'll send you a picture of their, their, their steak dinner, right? And you'll see another plate in front of them. And t they totally know, I, I came to the restaurant by myself. 
but you, you see, you see that lobster bisque over there. You see a hand with nail polish, right? You see that. I tell the the audacity of these people. It just never ceases to amaze me. They're they're like, there's something else. I tell you, there are something else. Um. This one's funny. They drove them around in your car that they defrauded without <laughs> you knowing. <laughs> That's awesome. That sucks. That sucks, I gotta tell you. My ex always said he needed to spend time with his dog, who, by the way, he left overnight alone every time he was with, he was with me, which was often. And we worked 12-hour shifts together. So you can't answer the phone when you're hanging out with your dog, eh? Oh! I get it now. He was hanging out with the new supply. Okay, got it. He was ha Wait, I screwed that up. Let's read that last line again. He was hanging out with his <laughs> That's right. Clever. Clever. I see what you did there. Womp womp. Yeah, that's funny how um, they do the same thing with their kids, by the way. They do the same thing. with. They will tell you, I need to go home and spend time with my kid. But they will leave their kid overnight while they're out knocking boots with randos. They will do that. <laughs> oh boy. And they think you're going to take them back. Get the hell out of here. This one says, they used your stolen credit card to pay for the room. Yes. Thanks, uh, Patty Northcott, mistress of my 101. That's an interesting name. I butchered it, I'm sure. But Here's the comment I want to focus on for today's video. And this one's come from Alan Templeton. Alan says, Generally, when dealing with normal people, it's unlikely to be the worst case scenario. When dealing with one of these pigs, the worst case scenario is the first case scenario. Remember the question was, what are these mutants doing when they pick a fight and they ghost you? Okay. Yes, the worst case scenario is usually the first case scenario. Okay, they are in a motel, knocking boots with a new supply, guaranteed. Okay, or at the house, at their house. If she says she talked to some guy at work, that means she's going to. I got. I got to do this one again with a funny sound effect. If she says she talked to some guy at work, that means she's going to <laughs> him. If she says she's friends with some guy, that means she's <laughs> hundreds of times. If she's going out every week for a girl's night out, she's been rotating through a, g <laughs> through a gang of guys. It's okay because our courts treat elephants like they were the Virgin Mary. So. That is the highlighted comment. That one made me laugh a lot um, when I read it. Um, but you're right. You know, you have to be able to decipher narcissist language and, and, and the code, right? They, they speak in codes, right? The minute they start talking to you about some guy at work, they're re she's already hooking up with that guy at work. The minute she starts to tell you that that guy at work is... Um, a drug addict, that guy at work is, is getting obsessed with her or something like that, that means not only did they do the thing, but they were in a relationship already behind your back, and then they broke up, and that's the drama that's going on, okay? Um, and yeah, and then she's going out dancing with all her friends, yeah, that's a bunch of dudes. It, look, this type of stuff has been going on since the beginning of time. Now we have a name for the disorder, but remember guys, just because somebody cheats on you, just because somebody is living a double life, just because somebody's rotating through a harem of guys or gals, that doesn't mean they are psychopaths or narcissists. The behaviors are psychopathic, the behaviors are narcissistic, okay? But do not be too quick to drop that label, right, and assume everything else. Because it really doesn't matter what the label is. What they did was the cheating. That's where it needs to end. Okay? Now, if you want to talk about the abusive,
patterns of behavior that went on throughout all your life, if it started with a love bombing experience for several months where you got hooked, then they started changing and stopping all the attention and they started devaluing you. They no longer liked all those things that they were so in love with. And then it gets to the point that they throw you away like you're a piece of trash. Those are patterns of NPD. Those are patterns of borderlines too. Those are patterns of psychopaths, right? They could, they could have a lot of different um, symptoms, right? But sure, this is a, a psychopath exposure channel. Sure, we talk about the, the personality disorders here. But I want everybody to lock in on the deal breakers in your relationships. Lock in on the deal breakers and realize that that's it. Once that happens, it doesn't matter if they're mentally ill, schizophrenic, alcoholic, narcissistic, doesn't matter what they might have. The reason you got to terminate that relationship is because of the deal breakers. What are your deal breakers? Do you guys have any deal breakers? Cheating for me is number one. I can go down a list of a bunch of deal breakers, but that's, that's the one that I thought was universally known, universally accepted. And I put up with it at the beginning. I put up with it because I did not have the concrete evidence, because I was being gaslighted. I knew 99%, but I needed that 1%, right? You can't, you can't. You can't. We're not in a court of law. 99%, you know, this person's cheating on you. That means they're all, they are already flaunting this person. Somehow you're catching wind of them. Somehow you're seeing text messages they're hiding. They're acting strange, right? They might even be withholding intimacy. Do you need to have the 100% solid proof? Do you need to catch them in the act? Because what about all those other things that they're doing? that are tipping you off to the fact that they are cheating on you. What about that? Does that not matter? Does that not hold weight? Because all those things, like some people say micro-cheating, if they're liking or hearting pictures of other girls on Instagram, if they're following all these chicks and they're just commenting on their pictures and, 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 and the chicks are like exposing themselves on, on IG or whatever, if, they, if, <laughs> if they've got you know, if they're subscribed to them and things like that. Is that okay with you? Because if it is, all right, then, you know, you got you, you to gotta be quiet. But if it's not, it's only going to get worse if you don't put a stop to it. I mean, and, and what I mean by a stop to it, I mean, you probably need to terminate that relationship because you can't force someone not to do something, right? A cheater is going to cheat, right? An alcoholic is going to drink. You can pour out all the liquor. They'll, they'll drink the Listerine, right? They will pour vodka in, in, in the vase of the flowers, and they'll drink that. <laughs> That's what they'll keep the vodka in, right? A true story. The narcissist is going to do what the narcissist is going to do. The psychopath is going to do what the psychopath is going to do. And very calculated at it, too. And very good at it, too. So. But, yeah. That's it. That's all for today. I, I got a kick out of your answers. Thanks for, thanks for the votes. Thanks for the comments. Um, really sucks that all this has happened to us. But you got to find a way to laugh. You got to find the silver lining. Because, like I said in, in other videos, you know, this is your life. And you can't let your life pass you by. You got to keep moving forward. Um, you know, eventually you're gonna look back at this and you're gonna be like, wow, I can't believe I can't believe I survived that. I can't believe I was going through that. I can't believe I stayed in that for so long, but my life is so much better now. Oh my God. Oh my God, thank God it's so much better now. And if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have discovered this and I wouldn't have traveled over here and I wouldn't have met this person. So keep your head up, guys. Keep your head up, keep moving forward right? 
you want to work with me, have a coaching program, I will help you move forward. I got your back. You can't do this on your own. It's simple, but it's not easy because we're talking about matters of the heart, psychological, trauma. And these narcissists know just what buttons to push to keep you hooked. They will cheat on you in front of you and you'll be begging for more. So click that link in the description so you can get more information on my coaching program. See if we're a good fit for each other. I would love to link up and work with you guys. Help you out of this nightmare. And you'll see. You will see. Give it enough time, things get better. But you, you got to get out of that. You got to get out of that situation. All right? So don't forget to subscribe if this is your first time here on the channel. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell notification so you can get notified when I drop videos like this so you won't miss a single video. And uh, as usual, share with us your experience down below. Uh, you were in a situation like this where the narcissist picked a fight and they stormed out. What exactly would their, were they doing? How did you catch them? What excuse did they tell you? What excuse? That's the one that I'm really, really curious about. What excuse did the narcissist give you? And for now, if you want to check out a really cool video, check out the narcissist living a double life, okay? Because that's quite common. You can check that out right here in the corner, there, right? Click on that, check it out, and I will see you in the next video. My name is Kita. This is Psychopath Exposure. See you next time.